Welcome everyone back to another session with me here, Valerie Williams at Dimensional Talent Streams. So excited to come before you and bring another presentation, another training. And our topic today is going to be your voice in business and what you are saying. Now, I know that may seem like, okay, why is she going to be talking about that? I mean, we use our voice every day you know, how is this going to be pertinent to business like what she has said? And if you are asking that question, great question. That means I have got your attention. That means I've already got you thinking and I've got you already in a state of curiosity. So stay tuned as we are gonna dive right on in to your voice in business. What are you saying? So when you open your mouth to speak, people automatically start making value judgments about you within seconds. They don't know you, so they start asking themselves all sorts of questions. They may ask your, they may ask themselves, okay, I wonder how old he or she is. I wonder if he or she is married. I wonder what kind of education do they have? And you know, if they're in business, how long have they been in business? But they also start to answer their own questions about you that they have formulated, even though they don't know you. So the sound your voice makes sets aside um, the precedence way up front. The voice, your voice, and the sound that your voice makes is going to grab the attention of your hearer, your listener up front. And the sound your voice makes, aside from the words, is what we call tonality. Now, think about the words you spent, the words you spend, you spend, excuse me. Think about the time, the energy that we spend on a daily basis, may, maybe even second by second, of the words that we're trying to formulate just to get our product and services out there, uh, to promote ourselves, to when we're talking with our clients, our, our, par, our business partners, prospects, just to kind of get your service out there, your product out there. Maybe you're doing a presentation. Maybe you've got a board meeting that you're doing. Um, maybe you are about to go meet with a prospect and you've got to sell them on the idea of uh, why they should choose you as a real estate agent from a different real estate agent down the street. But when you delivered those words, I want you to think about this. Did you go exactly, did things go exactly as you planned? When you were thinking and formulating all these words about what you were gonna say to capture that ideal client, that prospect, did you also consider um, you know, the words? And did it go exactly as you planned? If no, think about what your mistake was. Did you depend on your words to seal the deal? Did you only focus on those words and not the sound of your voice? If you have answered that no to that question, or if you are saying this up, you know what? I never even thought about the sound of my voice. You know, have you been so dependent on what your pitch was going to say, which again are your words? And if you are saying, you know, yes, I was just focused on my pitch. I've been in business for X amount of years and done pretty well with what I've been doing, then you are in the right place at the right time today. Because I want to go in depth about why, as I mentioned earlier, the topic of our training today, the sound of your voice and how that affects us in business. Did you know that there are 88 keys on a piano and that your voice can go up and down like the melody of a piano and a great song as your voice can go up and down? This is exactly what sound is all about. 
your voice becomes a musical instrument and keeps the listener engaged, keeps the listener interested and hanging on the edge of their seat. Think about how you got to uh, this podcast, this training, wherever you are hearing or even viewing this presentation. Thinking about, think about how you got here and what you've been able to hear thus far and how I have been able to capture your, your attention just by the very topic of um, our teaching today and what you have heard thus far. Think about the inflection that you hear in my voice. Think about the ups and the downs that you hear in my voice and hold on to those balloons that I'm floating up now as we progress further and further into our teaching today. Now, your voice, as I mentioned, becomes this musical instrument. And we've talked about how it keeps your listener engaged and on the very edge of their seat. So hanging on to the sounds coming out of your mouth, this is what melody can do for you. It will make sure that your listeners are not falling asleep, that they're not bored while you're actually talking to them. It will help them to retain the information that you are articulating. Now, I wanna ask you, what's your story? What's your story? Do you have a journey? You know, we all love a good story, a story of how we overcame adversity. You know, those rags to riches stories, the stories where we started a business on a shoestring budget with no money. And now years later, we're, we're in the profit mode. We're, we've built consistency. We've got a client base and we're doing well and making X amount of dollars per year. Share your journey. I want to encourage you to share your journey because your journey is your story. And like I said, everybody loves a good story. And your journey, your story of how you overcame your adversities is a huge part in what you can share and is a huge part to your story. Remember, you're not only wanting to think about the end result with your sale, with getting that prospect, that client, but you also want to foster relationship. Now, I've mentioned that I have my YouTube channel and my social media channels, and you can find me on those, any social media platform, TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, by just simply entering in Dimensional Talent Streams and the same on YouTube. And on my YouTube channel and my social media platforms, I do have a teaching where I share and talk about why fostering a relationship is so critical and so important in business, especially now that things have been lifted out as a result of coming out of COVID-19. And so just for the sake of this presentation, I'm going to stay true to what we're talking about today and not rear off the road and stay on the importance of the voice in business. But I want to point that out too, because a lot of my videos um, cross-reference one another, run par our parallels to one another, and are building blocks. And so I just wanted to point that out as I'm men mentioning fostering relationships in this presentation that I do have a separate teaching on fostering relationship in business, what that looks like, why it's so important now, um, and just the so many benefits and what it will do not only for you, your business, but also for your client and your clients, which is the name of the game and why we are in business to begin with. So as we continue on in this presentation, your journey of why and how you got into business is a journey that you can share. Um, why you got into entrepreneurship? Why did you choose the niche that you did? For example, I am in the business development space where I provide business, a business platform to existing businesses and to entrepreneurs individuals who do not have their own business, but are looking for an opportunity that they can use for themselves and create their own business out of and market and, and brand themselves with the platform that I provide. So, and why did I get into that niche? I'll tell you my story. You know, I came from 
the um, healthcare industry and have been in the healthcare industry for over 20 years, serving in the enrollment billing area of healthcare. I've also served in health information management, where I serviced 40 plus hospitals in Boston, Massachusetts, where I supported these hospitals in the IT portion of admissions, abstracting medical records, quality management and risk management. And so I was their point person for anything regarding the software of these particular modules and helping them to resolve their issues so that they could do their day-to-day -day out, day-to-day -day, uh, uh, business and day outs. Um, I was also involved with the billing, the, the billing IT within healthcare as well. I've also done the clinical side where I was in orthopedics. Um, I've also served in behavioral health for a number of years and was an office manager for a private practice um, here in North Carolina, where I have moved from Boston to North Carolina uh, for a couple of years. So a very diverse background in healthcare. And so I always would try to get out of healthcare and go into another field. My degree is in business management, but every time I would find myself trying to leave the healthcare industry, I always got back involved in it um, in some capacity. Hence my uh, diverse areas that I've touched within the healthcare industry. And so I got to a point where I stopped running from healthcare, embraced it, and realized that, um, okay, this is a sign of a gifting, uh, a gifting that I have, a, 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 uh, a mantle that has been placed on me as a woman of faith uh, from the Lord. And so I stopped running from that and embraced that, okay, this is a sign that I, I bring healing, that I bring wholeness, that I, I bring health. And so I stopped running from healthcare and embraced that, okay, this is a part of my passion, a part of what I've been destined to do to bring healing, uh, bring wholeness, to bring health. Uh, within our being. And I, how did I get into entrepreneurship and owning my own business today? Great question. I always wanted to do more. I always did not want to be limited, always wanted my own time freedom, wanted to be able to dictate my income uh, as what I could bring in, dictate the 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 um, how far I could go and not be stuck in a corporate and on a corporate ladder and having people tell me I could only go so far in business. And I wanted to do it on my own terms. And so entrepreneurship provided me with the freedom to carve out my own revenue, my own time freedom, and to really focus on what is important to me, which is to bring health, to bring wholeness to business owners, entrepreneurs, and online marketers through my business development platform. And so a marriage of the two uh, became one where I bring that whole health and wholeness to business development. And how do I do that? I do that through my platform that provides lead generation and multiple income streams. And a lot of us do not have multiple income streams. And that is how my business, Dimensional Talent Streams, was birthed. And so I also educate people not only on the business platform with lead generation and these moving parts that they can use within their business, but also with multiple income streams. And the multiple income streams, being able to share the streams where they are, tapping into the true passions of individuals, how to balance multiple income streams, what the specific multiple income streams may look like. And all of that is what I do within my business and incorporate that with my business development and business platform. And so that brings healing, it brings restoration, and it brings development. And so that has been my niche, why I went into business, why I kind of you know, fell into the niche that I did and how that is manifesting 
in my life as an entrepreneur and a business owner today. So that kind of just gives you a um, idea of my story and a little bit about my journey, although there's a lot more to it, ins and outs, the adversity part of it as well. But that gives you an idea and gets you to think about what's your journey, what's your story, why'd you choose, uh, why'd you go into business, and with the business that you have, why that particular area, whether it's real estate, car dealership, insurance, business and finance, what have you. So as you share your journey, there is inspiration, there's motivation, there's hope, there is encouragement, there's empowerment, there's activation. There is discovery um, of maybe new talents and skills that you would not have had unless you took advantage of the the, uh, opportunity. So a missing piece to a puzzle is found for the listener and the prospect as well. You're building trust and authority. You're establishing yourself as an authority figure in the space that you're in. Your human side um, comes out a lot as well, not just your business side. So many times, and I have to remind myself of this all the time, that we get so focused and so cookie cutter and straight ahead on our businesses and what we do within our businesses day in, day out, that we forget about sharing that human side of us as well, sharing our story, sharing our journey, sharing what our journey looked like and identifying those adversities that we've had to face. So being able to share that human side um, and also it allows your listener to know that you care about them, that you are, you really want to service them. It's just not about making the deal. It's just not about making the sale. And you actually have their best interest at heart. And that builds rapport with them. It helps maintain retention so that they become a long standing client with you. And it will also help bring advertising, word of mouth. If that client you've established relationship, fostered it, and you established trust and authority with them, they can in turn be a um, advertising billboard for you as well. Did you know that when you speak with successful people, that they just don't want to talk about business and their success? They actually want to talk about their journey. True happiness and joy happens in the journey to that actual success. The missing conception and finding happiness, your purpose, your passion. You know, most people believe that you find contentment, purpose, and passion with achieve with the achievement of success. But true happiness and contentment, passion, purpose, it all happens during the journey towards the success. Now, if you don't focus on how much and how important the journey is then when you actually get to success, you will not enjoy it. You know, on my YouTube channel, I talk about in my, you know, other social media platforms, mental talent streams. I also have another video where I talk about success and what that looks like, how it's defined and by whose standards and who is defining your success. And is it really us that's defining our success? And if not, why we are allowing, um, someone other than ourselves to define our success. You know, the YouTube video that I have, it's called Identifying the Common Threads of Success. And I encourage you to go and watch that video um, on success. You know, sometimes, you know, things may seem foundational or that we we are well-schooled in a particular area. And sometimes we've got to just go back to those foundations and revisit certain things. And because we are growing every day, we're changing every day, we're learning new things every day. Um, And so revisiting an area that we think we have expertise in is such a good idea because it's so good to compare when you first heard a particular paradigm or teaching um, and compare that to when you listen to it now, what you actually get out of it in your present state. 
So I encourage you to go to my YouTube channel, like and subscribe, and again, Dimensional Talent Streams, and take a look at that video that I have called Identifying the Common Threads of Success. So let's continue on. So I don't want you to wait until you get to the top of your mountain to put your flag up to celebrate your success, to stake your ground. You know, generally we overcome an obstacle or an adversity and we don't celebrate the little successes. We wait till we actually get overcome that big issue. And then when we turn around, we don't have those markers along that journey to remind us and show us how we got to the final big outcome and success. So I want you to, as you climb your particular mountain, whatever that mountain may look like, I want you to put little flags up along the way as you conquer the little things on the way up to that mountain. You know, think of your journey up the mountain of your journey. Think on your journey, up the mountain of your journey. Don't wait to just get to the top of your mountain and then you're thinking on the journey. Remember your process up the mountain because the process is just as important as the destiny. The process is just as important as that final destination. You know, there is a woman of faith who has a ministry in St. Louis by the name of Joyce Myers. I know many of us have heard of Joyce Myers. And she has a book out called Enjoying Where You Are Until You Get Where You're Going. Enjoying Where You Are Until You Get Where You're Going. And I mentioned that as a reminder to not forget our processes and not just celebrate the processes so that when we get to the top of the mountain and we do stake that flag, we can look over that mountain and see a long trail of other small flags and see that trail of how we got to our final uh, destination. So it's all about that forward progression. So I mentioned that your story is the journey and how we love a good story. We love to hear about people's journey but your journey is also in your story. So as I mentioned about not, uh, not forgetting your little flags as you're along the way up your mountain and you know before you put that big, huge flag when you finally reach the top of your mountain, as you set these flags along the way, you allow yourself to remember, you allow yourself to reflect, you allow yourself to look back and see your progress. You're actually gaining territory and momentum. You're re reflecting on the lessons that you learned at each point so that you can take those lessons learned along with you as you continue to live out your life. You know, history is broken up in our stories. And our, as I said, our story is the journey and our journeys are in the story. So don't just focus on the prize, but don't forget about uh, the little prizes and the little things along the way to that ultimate prize. Now, as I speak with business owners and potential clients, and as I do my networking, you know, and I do my podcast interviews, some of the questions that I always ask is, you know, how did one, how did you get into business? What made you get into business to begin with? What are you looking to do in your business at this present state and time? How long have you been in business? And what are some of the things that you love about your business and some of the things that you don't like about your business? And it gets people to talk about themselves. They love to talk about themselves, especially you know things that they're involved in. You know, I call them their little babies, you know, things that were involved and become our babies. This is what we're passionate about. And who doesn't love to talk about themselves? So I also ask what um, they originally got out of what they did and what that looked like for them. You know, enjoying the journey as the journey as just as important as the destiny I mentioned, but enjoying those moments of the climb within your journey.
you know, and sometimes it's so hard to enjoy that climb, you know, but when you come on the other side of it, you cannot help but to reflect and to just be so thankful, you know, and it becomes a testimony. The test now becomes a testimony. So the journey is what you will also talk about at the very end of your life. So, you know, it becomes almost like you can leave a legacy within your story. Your story and journey can be a legacy that you leave when you're far, when you're gone, you know, when you're, you're finally gone, your story and journey can be a legacy. It can be, it can be something that is left behind um, while you're already gone and will continue to grow. So what's the story in your journey? Can you visualize the deposits of your story and your journey, the deposits of legacy that your story will leave and how it will continue to grow even after you are long gone? Now, did you know, I'm gonna shift a little bit and talk about the singing voice and the speaking voice, the singing voice and the speaking voice. Did you know that there's no difference between the singing voice and the speaking voice, but both require the sound to influence people? You know, if we don't have a sound, we're basically not saying anything. We're not moving anything. We're not moving anyone. And your voice not only has a sound, but there's music in your voice. There's that pitch, there's that pace, there's that tone, melody, and volume. And these are the exact same elements in singing, in singing, that are also in speakers. Now, as speakers are doing business, or as a speaker, and you're doing your business in your sphere of influence, you have the capacity to move your prospects and your clients. And how can you move them? You move them emotionally. You move them emotionally. So how do you, how do we, how do we open up our mouth? We assume that, you know, yes, we, we, we've been doing this for since birth. We know how to open our mouth. But the other flip side is the sound, creating the sound. So how do we open up our mouth to create the sound? And how do you know the correct sound to create? Every entrepreneur believes that if they have the right words to say, they could close the deal, close the sale, influence the person, get the funding that they need, and foster business relationships. But word to word is an improper science. I'm going to say that again. Word to word is an improper science because the way the brain works is that it processes spoken information first for emotion and then for logic. So who says you're emotional or who says women are emotional creatures? We hear that all the time. Well, it doesn't work the other way around. You know, I just stated that word to word is an improper science because the way the brain works, the brain is gonna process the spoken information first for emotion and then for logic. So it doesn't really work the other way around. So if you have words and you say that those words, and you say the words, I really want you to purchase this product for my company. I really love my company. You are gonna make so much money in my company. And this is said with a very monotone, dry voice, like, I really want you to work for my company. I love the products in my company. You're going to make so much money in the company. If that's said with that very dry, monotone voice, the, the, the ag medulla, the part of the brain that processes the information, is going to say, that's not emotional. Who cares about you or your company? But if you add the right sound and emotion to your voice, and you say, you're going to love my company. You have to meet the founder of my company. He is so amazing. She is so amazing. Then the amygdala part of your brain 
that sounds is going to say that sounds emotional at least. So I'm going to pass this information to the prefrontal cortex of my brain. And that's the part of the brain that processes the information. And then from there, the brain is going to think about it, is going to decide how it feels about it. It's going to connect it to the memories, what was said. And then it's going to store that information into memory. And then it's going to choose whether they want to act upon it, whether they should act upon it or not. So what entrepreneur, what business owner needs, needs to understand is that we are speaking word to word. And if we learn the sounds to attach to words, we could move people more in emotional ways that would get them to achieve the outcome of every conversation that we have. That's huge. Every conversation that we have, we can control the outcome based on learning sound, learning the emotion, learning enthusiasm in our voice. But if all we're thinking about are the words, then they're gonna be a bad, it's gonna be like a bad PowerPoint presentation with no pictures. It's just gonna be all about the words on the PowerPoint presentation, bullet points, but no pictures, no figures, nothing that we can see. And nobody's going to remember that. Nobody is going to even want to care. Nobody's going to be able to main, hold on to that information. So enthusiasm is everything. Now, here's a quote from a gentleman by the name of Kevin Kelly, who stated, Enthusiasm is worth 25 IQ points. So how much is enthusiasm really worth? When you're thinking about this, why would we not bring enthusiasm to what we're doing? You really have to have and make your prospects and clients that you're speaking with feel something. Be emotionally connected to your words bring their emotions, bring their enthusiasm up. And their enthusiasm can go up just by you being enthusiastic because they're going to be feeding off of you. And remember to engage in an emotional and enthusiastic way. Think about the words that you are conveying and using and the emotion that you're conveying through your words. You know, I mentioned earlier that, you know, this presentation really um, challenged me uh, because it really has me looking at how I'm speaking, how I'm articulating myself. And it's really causing me now to listen to um, my, to listen to those on the other end and to listen to how their voice sounds, the inflection in their voice, you know, and to hear the dips in their voice, to hear that tone that we talked about. And so the one thing I want to share with that every entrepreneur, business owner should know about in their voice is what I want to shift with in our presentation today. The one thing every entrepreneur should know, every business owner should know about their voice so that we can use it more effectively within our businesses. You know, we talked about Joe's just don't think about words. Um, but, but words of enthusiasm, because that makes the sound of enthusiasm. You speak a little high, fast, you have lots of melody. This is all a part of the sound of enthusiasm. If you speak softer, and if you speak airier with no melody, you speak softer and airier with no melody at all you would be able to use your words to create enthusiasm. You're opening your mouth and you're making sounds that are leading people to feel things they don't want to feel. An example, we were trained to go down with our voice. When we see commas and periods, we have a tendency to go down in our volume, melody, and in our notes. The only time you could go up was if it was a question. So the only time, up in volume, pitch, and note. But again, the remaining time, you only go down. 
So in music theory, you know, music teachers, they teach that when you have a descending scale from higher notes to lower notes, you sound sad and you make the listener sad. But in an ascending scale going from low to high, for example, my name's Valerie Williams and I really love the topic that I'm teaching today. That is an ascending scale. And ascending scales make people happy. Now, if entrepreneurs recorded themselves for 30 seconds, you would find, they would find that they were using descending scales on every sentence. That just blows my mind. Now, how many of us don't even like to hear the sound of our voice? How many of us even record ourselves, period, for that matter? So before you go to a comma or a period, you go down. No one thinks of this in terms of music, but realize that your voice already makes all kinds of emotional sounds, but you may not be creating the actual emotion that you want. Why wouldn't you wanna make your listeners happy? Why would you wanna make them sad? Makes, that doesn't make any sense. Now, if you're doing monotone, which is holding the same note, which most people do, how is this being perceived? It's being perceived that you're boring, you're unemotional, you're lifeless, and that you're like one note on a piano. Your listener is thinking, I'm, I already know what they're gonna say. I already know what they're gonna sound like next. I already know what they're gonna say next. And you know, your listener just doesn't buy one note of music, nor do they listen to one note, one note of music. They don't buy or listen. And your listener is always also going to think that, you know, not only do they know what you're going to say next, they don't want to listen to what you have to say next because they figure they already know the answer to it. They are smarter than you and that they know more than you do. And now what have you done? Lost all anticipation. Now, the sounds you're making, we need to focus on them. Which one of them do you really want to make people feel certain ways? Which sounds are you making that are actually betraying the outcome of the conversation that you want? One note is boring and will literally put you out of business. One note is boring and will put you out of business. If you're gonna make sounds which are from your mouth, why not make that sound be a sound that your audience, your prospect, your business, anyone listening to you is gonna to want to listen to? Now, how do sounds better in business and in everything that we say? How can we sound better and have that ascending skill heard? Emotions that we're able to convey with our voice and actually sound better today. You know, great speaking occurs when the right amount of air meets the right amount of your vocal cords and then they come out of your mouth. So most people, what we do is we hold our breath while we're speaking. And what happens is it makes us sound nasally like we have a cold. We have no thickness, no volume, and no resonance in our voice, in our sound. You know, I think about this old song that says, just breathe. You're supposed to breathe in through your nose because there's filters in your nose. And every breath you take in the nose moistens the air so that it doesn't dry out your throat so that we can talk more. Breathe in through your nose and pretend that you have a balloon in your stomach. Your stomach comes forward and then you speak as your stomach is coming in. And this is what a lot of us are missing. So let your stomach out and get air. You know, we let our stomach stay stationary like, you know, we want to show that we have abs and that we're fit and that we may not be out of shape like we really are, but we really gotta learn to let our stomachs come out like a balloon, inflating, and then speak only while your stomach 
is coming in. What this is going to do, it's going to send out so much more air to the vocal cords and out of your mouth. You know, speaking softly, I also think about a song that says, killing me softly. You know, I don't have all the lyrics, but I just hear that little, that little, you know, one line of killing me softly. You know, most people, we speak softly. And it's because, you know, being afraid of speaking louder, because we think if we speak louder, then, you know, we're making that sound of being angry or that we're angry. And the sound angry, you have to be louder. You have to stay on the same note and you have to speak faster. You know, people are afraid of volume. And volume has three main components. Three, not just extra volume, but did you know anger also has three sounds? So volume has three main components and that there are three sounds, not just extra volume, but anger also has three sounds. You know, unless you have all three of these, you'll never sound angry. If your voice was just louder, your voice will make the listener's body vibrate. But if you add melody to the volume, you could never sound angry. But if you were louder and had volume and you didn't speak fast, you still wouldn't sound angry. So you've got to realize that you're speaking too softly. So it's like you're using your inside voice. I remember playing around with this when I had this discovery, um, you know, because it was um, one of John Dumas had a speaker from Entrepreneur on Fire, Fire Nation, and he had a speech or a voice coach on his podcast. And this speaker is a voice coach and he's a voice coach to uh, a, a pretty well wealthy, uh, very well-known group of folks like Tony Robbins, um, Selena Gomez. And I credit this presentation um, to John Dumas's uh, guest, um, who was a, as I mentioned, a coach, a voice coach to Tony Robbins and Selena Gomez. And so many well-known, if I mention their names, you'll know who they are. But I was trying these exercises out and what really drew me to um, bringing, sharing this teaching from John, John Dumas' special guest, his name is Peter Love, um, is I was drawn to, you know, how does our voice affect us in business? How does our voice affect us in business and how am I sounding in business? But, you know, I've had a lot of comments through the years about my voice and, you know, how my voice sounds and what I should do with regard to my voice. So it, it piqued my interest. And I thought, you know, I, I have to share this with my, you know, my video uh, and uh, my audio audience as well. And I just thought it would just be so neat, a different topic because it intrigued me. So I wanted to share it with you. But I began to practice these exercises you know, of trying to sound angry when I'm really not and listening to my pitch and, and tone and so forth and sounding enthusiastic. Um, but, you know, speaking, um, you know, of physical, physical connection and getting back into our teaching, speaking is such a physical connection and sound is supposed to come out of our mouths and it's actually supposed to vibrate the body of our listeners. And did you also know that unless you send your voice about seven to eight feet in front of you, um, you really can't do that. You can't do this. You, you know, you really have to, our voices have to project. And if we're not getting at least seven to eight feet in front of us, we are shooting ourselves in the foot but most people are trying to get their voice into a microphone, creating an inside voice with no volume, no melody, bad breathing, because our breathing is being withheld. And so as a person who does a lot of social media and doing presentations, I really, you know, am guilty of that, just thinking about getting my voice into the microphone and it really caused me to think about, okay, getting my voice seven to eight feet in front of me. Um, so 
I just want to kind of share some recaps now from and some highlights from our session today because emotion in your voice, excitement, those ascending notes, breathing correctly through your nose, inflating your stomach, and speaking while your belly is deflating. So this is your voice training today for your business, for anything that you're doing in life. I hope that this presentation can be like a voice training for you that you can, that will really have you thinking about your voice and what you're doing and being deliberate about your voice in every area of your life, but especially in your business, because your voice changes every time you learn a technique and your voice really does change overnight. You know, we have heard, oh, we, you know, it's not going to change overnight. Well, that is a lie. Our voice changes overnight and changes every time we learn a technique and practice that technique. So if you don't get anything out of this presentation, think about these highlights. Think about these in terms of your own voice and how you are articulating your voice in your business. Try out some of these method methods the, the 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 excitement and the ascending notes use your voice to unlock a new level of success in your business and your life what do you want think about that your next stage is in your business of what you want to achieve how you want to pivot and take your business your life your money to new levels and think about your voice and the sound of your voice, the enthusiasm, the melody, the song, the ascending notes in your voice for this new period and stage of your business and your life. You know, there's a method called the stair step method. And there's three ways that you we can add melody to our voice. There are three directions that melody can go. You know, your melody in your voice can go walking up the stairs, down the stairs or staying on one note, monotone. So stair-step method, going up the stairs, down the stairs, or are we just gonna stay on one note? So when you speak, I want you to practice these three directions. I want you to say to yourself, okay, I'm taking my voice up the stairs, or I'm gonna take my voice down the stairs, or I'm gonna stay monotone. I'm taking my voice down the stairs. So think of these three methods when you're speaking. Before you begin to speak, tell yourself, let's walk up the stairs. Be deliberate and connect your notes to the words that come out of your mouth. Practice adding melody to your voice, any form of melody, because melody is going to showcase your personality. The other thing I wanna mention in this is to be your authentic self. Be genuine in, you know, it's going to feel weird when you try out some of these techniques. It's going to feel like this feels so artificial. This feels so, you know, not genuine. But the more and more you do it, the more comfortable you get and you add your personality to it. And we are all created different. We are not all created to be carbon copies. We've heard that said throughout our lives, I'm sure all of us have heard that at least one time in our lifespan, that we are not all created to be carbon copies. It's the differences that we have that set us apart. Same with our personalities. You know, I, I as I reflect, I also have a video that talks about permission to be you in business, because so often we want to look at other people's success. We want to look at other people's success and we want to take their success or glean from their success and plug it into our lives to get our own personal success. And that is fine to a certain extent. It's fine, but there is a red flag that goes up when you're doing it in a way that is really not you, um, in a way where you, you, you take their methodology, but now you're taking their personality instead of letting your personality shine through. So have you thought about the way you sound? You know, we read a lot of books, we go to conferences, we go to seminars, we get all these certifications and degrees and, 
and so forth, but we forget about our voice and the way we sound. I'm guilty of it. Hence me presenting this to you. This was a, a teaching that landed in my lap through someone that I subscribed to in business, John Dumas, Fire Nation, Fire Nation, who had a guest on it, as I, as I shared with you earlier. And I was so excited to bring this presentation to you and wanted to share it. But, you know, how many times have we heard our own voice? And like I said, we shrieked. And, you know, science says the way you sound is the way you impact people. And we move people how? Emotionally. Now, is the way you control their perception. And it's the way to control the outcome of your communications. So huge, so huge. So in closing, you know, I want to share a couple of things because you move them, we move people, we move our clients toward outcome. You know, true happiness, joy, purpose, love happens during our journey towards success. Focus on the trip and enjoy every moment of your journey. As an entrepreneur, business person, you should add the correct sounds and emotions to your voice to move people in emotional ways that's gonna get them to achieve at every conversation that you have. Speaking again, we said it is a physical connection. Sound has to come out of our mouths and vibrate the body of the people that we're speaking to. That is the true happiness and joy. And that is what our voice is to do and was created to do. I want to thank you for listening, watching wherever you are, for being a part with me here, Valerie Williams of Dimensional Talent Streams. It was such a pleasure to have you uh, be here to listen and to watch. I want to remind you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like, subscribe, Dimensional Talent Streams. Find me again on any social media platform, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram. And I also want to invite you to my podcast that is held every Thursday, 6 p.m. on TW3radio.com. Again, Dimensional Talent Streams can also not only be heard on YouTube and all of the social media platforms, but also on radio at TW3.com every Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please join me there as well. Um, and let's motivate, encourage, empower, inspire, bring fresh knowledge and share, bring healing and wholeness by um, sharing these Dimensional Talent Streams in these nuggets. Again, I'm Valerie Williams of Dimensional Talent Streams. Thank you for joining me today and have a great and prosperous day. See you next week.